Adam, how are you? Yeah. Uh, thanks for giving a very clear presentation. Uh, I just had a few quick questions if I can ask you. Um, the active thermitic material in the Open Chemical Physics Journal uh, paper. That are are we speaking about the nanothermite material? Yeah, the nanothermite material. Uh, these authors have uh, published three papers now, like one in the environmentalist and two. One, just one second. Can we just turn this off now? It's loud, so I can turn it back down. Okay, sure. Um, they've authored now like three papers, and um, I was wondering, with all the reputations you gave, I think they're important. I was wondering if you can actually publish a repu reputation, uh, submit it for peer review, uh, so we can actually you know, match each argument, each argument that they're making. That's my first question. Yeah, and and I, I certainly intend to do that. Okay. Okay, sure. Okay. Uh, my second question is about R.J. Lee's analysis. About which? R.J. Lee's analysis. Yeah. Or, yeah. Um, they uh, reported that uh, vascular aluminosilicate particles, um, which exemplifies a rounded, open, porous structure having a Swiss cheese appearance, it had holes in it. Yep. And it was a result of boiling and evaporation. And the boiling point for the melting point of aluminosilicate was reported as like 1450 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. I wanted to hear your response to how that could happen. And thirdly, my question about the LBQC7, you said more research is needed, and I, I also agree, but the problem is that NIST has published something called the final report on LBQC7. That either means, can you say that more research is needed, either that you disagree with something that they're saying, or that their research is not comprehensive enough? And so I was wondering if you can please highlight uh, where your disagreements may be. Uh, excellent question, Gonzalo. Why, why is ADS not enough for research? Oh, okay, well, just, just hold on one second, because I want to address that. As an investigator, I don't depend on one source of information. Yeah. Because of the fact that I have no idea whether that is all the information that's available or whether they've done a selective screening of the information. So the fact that NIST is totally not trusted by any of the researchers in the 911 area that believe it was brought down by explosives tells me that if I use that for the basis of my report, that not only would it be scientifically not smart to do that, but also it would be attacked. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at other data that's come up about the Building 7 that's outside of the NIST report. So certainly I would refer to the NIST report just as a general overall, but I wouldn't use it as my sole source of information any more than any investigator would, right? I mean, if an accident takes place and one report is generated on it, that does not mean that the, gener that the report is flawed, that in fact evidence was overlooked. It's only by independent investigation you can determine that that's occurred. So Building 7 requires a little more thorough analysis. I have started that analysis. But I can tell you, my preliminary findings tell me that there was no explosive use because there were none of the explosive uh, signatures that you would expect with an explosion. And unless those are present, then there wasn't an explosive. Secondly, a fire is a very complicated event. And all of the research that I've read on 9-11, particularly on the 911 website, seems to take one temperature in one area and extrapolate the, uh, from that an incredible story, right? Well, it wasn't hot enough to do this and do this and do this. And I can tell you from experience being in many fires, that fires vary, the temperature of the fires can vary significantly room to room to room. So when it comes to silica material, and what happened to that silica material, that's a very interesting scientific question. And I, like you, believe that that requires an investigation, to be sure. So I can't comment on it, because I haven't seen the samples, I have read the paper, but I can say, that as an investigator, if someone is culpable for blowing down buildings one and two and seven, then they should go to jail. I mean, I have no skin in this game in terms of saying, well, I'm protecting them. I'm not protecting anybody. I'm like a, a coroner or a medical examiner that comes out and sees a dead body on the ground. My job is to determine if that, if that person was stabbed with blunt trauma, and at that moment, I don't care whether that person belongs to the Ku Klux Klan, whether they're an anarchist or communist, it makes no difference to me. That's up to the homicide detectives to determine if that's part of the motive. What I'm trying to determine is the cause of death and the time. So when it comes to this fire and explosion investigation, silicate that has this particular signature to it, that's of great interest to me. And I definitely would do a study. And believe me, if I could determine that explosives were used in the buildings, then I'd say hang the people responsible because of the fact that a lot of innocent people died that day. But the scientific fact does not lead me to that. Yes, sir. My question is a somewhat related uh, to whether you can test that the towers and Building 7 accelerated to the ground at the rate of free fall. And uh, if you do contest it, uh, how do you measure the rate of collapse? And 
if you do agree with it, then can we discuss the implications of the collapsing at the rate of free fall? Um, because it seems like uh, there would be no resistance for the, uh, the building essentially just be hissing if it had collapsed at that stage. The building below would not be putting up any resistance if it did fall at free fall. First of all, the bridge in Ohio collapsed a few years ago. And when it collapsed, the engineers, scientists, and specialists were at shock at how fast it occurred. A structure falls as fast as it falls, right? In other words, uh, when a building has been pre-weakened and the main support beams have been taken out by fire, which is what occurred as they started to sag and the loads transferred over the, from the top path down through the girders, the building could no longer sustain the weight and it started to collapse. And it will collapse as fast as it collapses. I'm not a physics expert, so I have absolutely no calculations to give you on pre-fall, but I can tell you this, that experts that have actually seen the building collapse have said to me, it wasn't explosive that caused it, but boy, there was something sure wrong with that building. And I agree with that analysis. Do you, do you mean to say that the building was columns were damaged at the ground level? Please go on. Were, were you to say that the fires damaged the columns at the ground level? No. Because you said that it would, they, they were damaged. The fire spread through the building because actually unburnt fuel, jet fuel, actually went through the elevator shafts, went down through conduits, and spread floor to floor to floor. There were significant fire, fires in other areas of the building that the firefighters were encountering as they were going up. They actually had a triage center where they were actually treating people before the building collapse happened. And their account is that there were significant fires on other floors. When a building starts to collapse, it, it out of its own weight will collapse. A building is designed to take two forces, the gravity weight and also any weight or any force that's applied to it, whether it's an earthquake or whether it's wind. No building is required to have a rating for collapse from fire, although that's now being discussed. So when the weight of a building starts to let go, it lets go at its own speed. You would have to talk to a physicist for the exact calculations, and I'm not a physicist, just an explosive and fire expert. Thank you. Um, you may have partially answered uh, my question in, in your response just now, but um, you mentioned the radio communication from the police helicopter that there, they thought there was an imminent uh, uh, collapse uh, uh, coming, um, but you didn't mention uh, the uh, radio message by a uh, firefighter at the floor of the impact that was made to a ground base, suggesting that the fire was minimal and that they could not the get fire was the fire was uh, in isolated pockets and could be uh, knocked down with knocked out with a couple of holes. So where and I guess you're saying that there were fires in various points in the building at that point, but obviously the firefighters traveled up through them feeling that they needed to go to the source of the impact, and when they got there, there was very little fire. I, well, can you well, explain First that? of all, let me tell you that I spoke with a firefighter that was on the ground, or several of them, but one in particular was a captain. And as he indicated, every firefighter's experience in that building was individual. Depending on where you were in the building, you had a different phenomenon that you were confronting. So it's not uncommon for a firefighter to be in one part of a large building and say there's not much of a fire when there's a raging fire in another part. And all that they're reporting on is their individual experience. So they get a very localized point of view. Let me also point out that the communications did not work and that was a very horrible thing that they could not communicate with each other in the building. And in fact, that's something that still hasn't been fixed. And many firefighters died that day because even when they were ordered to back out of the building, they were going up the building doing what they were trained to do, which is to save people. It was a tremendous, sad thing that firefighters died because of poor communication. The communication I'm referring to is a helicopter. And the police helicopter and the police officer in it actually saw the top of the building kink like this. And as it started to kink, as it started to cave in on one side and fold over, he made the observation that it was deforming to the point where he felt it was going to collapse, and it did. And that's on video. You can actually.